Hi everyone, I'm Mike, a South Florida firefighter here with Drone Nerds and today we're going to go back to the basics and we're going to talk about where can I fly. Drones have come a long way and so have the restrictions with the FAA. Not only are you responsible for your drone, but you also are responsible for the guidelines and restrictions of where exactly you can fly. It is you as the remote pilot in command to know exactly where in the sky you can fly and know the regulations of where it is safe and not safe to fly. Let's talk about airspace restrictions, especially when operating a drone around airports. There's an extensive area in the part 107 course that talks about airspace restrictions. So you, as the drone operator, do not endanger other people and other aircraft. When talking about airspace restrictions, there are many different types of airspace restrictions in the United States. Some of these include stadiums and sporting events, near airports, security sensitive areas, restricted airspace, and of course, Washington DC. First, sporting events. Flying drones in and around a stadium one hour before and one hour after the event is prohibited by the FAA. This includes Major League Baseball, the NFL, NCAA Division I football, and of course NASCAR. We're also prohibited of flying a drone within a three nautical mile radius of that sporting event or stadium. Airports. Drone operators should avoid flying around or near airports because a drone is very difficult to see from a manned aircraft. Flying drones in controlled airspace. Flying drones in controlled airspace requires the operator to receive prior authorization. This is talked about extensively in the Part 107 course. Any drone operator that receives authorization may have provisions on the altitude of the flight or the exact area where they can fly. Part 107 and recreational drone flyers can get a pre-authorization to fly around controlled airspace using LAANC, low altitude authorization notification capability. This allows a drone pilot to operate near and around airports as another option. You also have the option of getting an authorization through the FAA Drone Zone. This can be a good option for you if you want to fly in an area that is controlled airspace and is not serviced by the LAANC, or you are flying under a Part 107 and want to fly in a zero grid area, or you have that waiver under the Part 107 and want to fly in controlled airspace using that waiver. airports and uncontrolled airspace. Recreational pilots and Part 107 remote pilots do not need prior authorization to fly in and around airports in uncontrolled airspace. You must remain under 400 feet above ground level and be aware of your surroundings for incoming aircraft. Security sensitive airspace restrictions. Operations are prohibited from the ground up to 400 feet above ground level for any designated national security sensitive facilities. These can include military bases or certain national landmarks. Restricted or special use airspace. These include your prohibited areas, your restricted areas, and your TFRs, temporary flight restrictions. The last restricted airspace is flying in and around Washington, D.C. Drone operators are restricted within a 15-mile inner radius ring without specific FAA authorization. Another airspace restriction is flying your drone over emergency and rescue operations. The FAA prohibits flying your drone over any emergency or rescue operation including wildfires or hurricanes. The FAA will set up a temporary flight restriction over those areas. A great app to use to know where you can fly is the FAA approved before you fly mobile app. This is a safety app which provides the real time information about airspace restrictions and other flying requirements based on your GPS location. 
The Before You Fly mobile app lets the recreational drone users who fly their drone for fun have an app to show them where they can and cannot fly with interactive maps. Another way to stay within the regulations of flying is to use the FRIA. FAA Recognized Identification Area. Beginning in September of this year, if your drone doesn't have the remote ID, you may be able to operate within the FRIA. What is the FAA Recognized Identification Area? It is a defined geographic area where drones can be flown without the remote ID equipment. Both the drone and the pilot must be located within the boundaries throughout the entire operation. Another way to know where we can or cannot fly is using the no drone zone. The FAA uses the no drone zone to help people identify certain areas where they can operate a drone. They have restrictions specific to a particular location. You can find out if there are airspace restrictions on the no drone zone when you are planning an operation by looking at the Before You Fly mobile app. Some of your no drone zone areas include restricted airspace areas, your local restrictions which are governed by state or local agencies, and of course your TFRs, your temporary flight restriction areas. This has been Mike with Drone Nerds with a basic overview of where you can fly your drone. For a better look, go on the FAA website where they give detailed information on where exactly you can fly your drone safely. Anytime you're operating an unmanned aircraft, it's extremely important to know your local, your state, and your federal regulations to stay in the air safe. If you have any further questions or comments, leave them below or contact us at experts at dronenerds.com. Once again, I'm Mike. Stay safe. Happy flying. Have a nice day.